Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Like I said before, it is, uh, it is very nice to be back home with the people that are very close to you. Um, as I was leaving, uh, you know, people were asking me down there if I was excited too. And this time, especially this time, this trip was uh, rather bittersweet because of the condition of my parents. And I covet your prayers on their behalf. Um, our son was a blessing to me this this time, and um, and I will give you updates uh, from time to time. But yes, right now, uh, you know I am desperate uh, need of uh, you folks holding me up, my family, them up. Uh, we left uh, three o'clock morning time Thursday. Traffic is so bad, so we had to leave early. But just the night before, just just the, a few hours before, our family came and gave us a, a farewell dinner. And I am challenging my dad. Dad, you know, eat just like if you continue eating like you're eating right now, you can make it another four, five, six years if the Lord wills to. And he looked at me and he says. Oh, and I said, because if not, if you don't eat, you, you know, you're going to die if you, if you don't. And he's, he replied to me with, with, uh, with, with so serenity and so what's the big deal if I die? For the Christian, you know that you're secured. Yeah. I said, yeah, but I don't want you. That's my dad. So I came with, um, you know, I don't like to hear that. Uh, but I know that uh, we live in the land, you know, but soon and very soon, the Lord will come and put an end to all this traveling and all this mess that we have. And folks at home, uh, welcome to our Sabbath worship hour. I am uh, excited to be here. We have a good swath of uh, uh, dear members, church members that are here with us worshiping. Welcome. To every one of you, um, today's message. Today's message. I have entitled, and I work on this one for three weeks. I would just take it from between one thirty in the morning to three or so that I had a spare time. I would sit down and write notes. So um, I think the Lord has um, uh, has something special for us, and I would invite you to go to your Bibles or your phones or what have you. And look for Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Verse 23. Hopefully next week I will have the PowerPoint up here so we can all read it aloud. Okay? Is that good? Yeah. All right. If you have it, say amen. We will continue. We will press on to make this church alive and well when we come to worship. Matthew 1, 23. Do you have it? And the word says, Behold, the virgin shall be with what? Child. Child. And bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. God with us. Amen. The word Emmanuel appears only three times in the Bible. This one that we read, Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah chapter 8, and Isaiah chapter 8 verse 10 is alluded, is alluded. It doesn't say the word Emmanuel, but it says God with us. So it's alluded. But if you look carefully from Genesis to Revelation, the word Emmanuel is implied, is there, is there. So to understand God with us, God with us, we need to know how to appreciate it, how to embrace it. We need to understand who this Emmanuel is, was, is, and will be. John chapter 1, verse 1. 
says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And then if we jump to, to verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then, how the Bible goes. And then you jump to John 3.16. And we all should know that, right? Let's say, for God so loved that he gave, that whosoever should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. And then if you just go back a little bit to Matthew 1, 21, it says, and it, it John 3, 16 doesn't mention who it is, right? Doesn't mention that Jesus is the one, but you, Matthew 1, 21 says, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The question and the answer. John 3, 16 and Matthew corroborates that the only begotten Son of God is who? Jesus, who came and died for you and for me. Amen. Now, Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel was what? Who? From the days of eternity, the Lord Jesus Christ was one with the Father. He was the image of God, the image of his greatness the image of his majesty, the outshining of his glory. And he had a mission. The second person of the Trinity had a mission. What was that? To manifest the glory of the Father and also to reveal the light of God's love. And to do so, it was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. And we find that in, in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. You know, I just said how the Bible explains itself. You know, yeah, it's good to go to theology school. It's good to buy books. But the Bible itself will what? Will explain it to you. And uh, Isaiah, in verse uh, in chapter 28, says that we should study the Bible precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. So, my beloved brothers and sisters, this great controversy that you and I are engaged in was transferred to our tiny planet. And we know that, right? We know that. So we have become the epicenter. You know that word, epicenter. Especially when, when you have earthquakes, right? The epicenter, where it took place. We occupy center stage in this sin-sick saga. By becoming to dwell with us, Emmanuel, Jesus was to reveal God both to men and to angels. He was the word of God, God's thought made audible, made audible. So, Emmanuel, the benefit is not only for us, it's for the entire universe. And why is that? Because we know, we know that God's reputation is at stake. That's what it is. That's a great controversy. Because he was accused of being something that he is not. And that continues until today, December 12th, 2020. Until. So, one third of the angels were duped. The whole planet Earth has been duped. So, the great controversy... God had to send his son to dwell among us so that he can reveal to us what? The glory of the Father and his amazing love. One author puts it that love and hate engage in mortal combat. That's a great controversy. Love and hate. 
And it's up to you and to me to decide whether we're going to love or we're going to hate. There's no gray area. There's no gray area. The mystery of redeeming love is the theme into which angels desire to look. Apostle Peter wrote this. Peter 1.12 Even angels desire to look into that plan of redemption. That redeeming love. And it will be their study throughout endless ages. Can you imagine that? Even the unfallen, the unfallen angels. They are so interested. So what about you and I? Are we interested in our own salvation? Yes. Huh? Yes, I hope so. I hope so. Otherwise, we're just wasting time here. Because if we come Sabbath in, Sabbath out, whatever we can, you know, prayer meeting or any other thing, and there's no real change in my life. If I come to you with the same nonsense that I brought last week, folks, we're just deceiving, deceiving ourselves. Basically, that's what it is. Amen. We're just duping ourselves. Amen. So, Emmanuel was the creator. John 1, 3, all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So it was Christ that spread the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. It was his hand that hung the worlds into space and fashioned the flowers of the field. King David says it beautiful, beautifully. His strength sets fast the mountains. The sea is his, and he made it. It was he, Christ, that filled the earth with beauty and the air with song. And upon all things in earth and air and sky, he wrote the message of the Father's love. Emmanuel with us. And I hope as we develop in the next few minutes the rest of this study, and you folks at home, you will feel God is with us. God is with you. No matter what you're going through, have the hope that God is with you. Now, what about Emmanuel is? Remember I told you, was, is, and will be. Emmanuel is. God with us. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is more than only a ticket to heaven. A lot of times we take, and we'll talk about us now, some of the other Christians, just because we have been blessed with a little bit more. That we just have to sit down and fasten our seatbelts and enjoy the ride. That is so far. That is using God, using Jesus as a ticket. But it's more. Jesus is more than a ticket. He is the only hope for our sinful situation. He's our only hope to be spared from God's righteous judgment and wrath that is soon to visit this planet. God is, Emmanuel is, the bread of life. Eat of him daily. He is the light of the world. Let him illuminate your path, my path, your life, my life daily. He is the door. Enter through him to be saved daily. He is the good shepherd, the only one who laid his life for you and for me. Amen. He is the resurrection and the life. Only through him you live and will live eternally. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Only through him you live. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The only means to salvation. And the last, he is what? Divine. Divine. Remember the last sermon we had here? I am divine. If you are connected, if you remain in me, you will what? Bear much fruit. The only source of meaning and being meaningful and productive until he comes and beyond. We are called. Three things. Remember, we have studied this. We, have, we are called to study our Bible daily. To pray, talk to the Lord, converse with Him, chat with Him daily. And then the third, the third aspect is to tell someone what God has done in your life. Amen. Three things, three things. 
So we ought to be productive in this life and the life to come because we are told we will be witnesses. We will be witnesses to tell our story, the story of redemption to the unfallen world. Isn't that something Amen. so special? It's a special privilege. The concept of Emmanuel was from the beginning of this plan because we find in Genesis that God used to what? To walk in the cool of the evening to have a chat with Adam and Eve. God with us. God manifested his presence with the people of Israel in many ways. And if you recall, that pillar of what? Fire. Fire. A cloud, right? Fire. Light during the nighttime. And warmth. And during the day, it was what? Like an umbrella. From that scorching heat in that desert. Jesus told his disciples that where two or three are gathered, where is he? In the midst. Ah? Ah. Do you think he's uh, right now with us? Yes. Yes, yes. And he is watching us, right? With loving arms. Not to chastise us, but to his wooing us. Wooing us to his precious heart. To be more like him. That is the reason why we should not. That is the reason why Hebrews chapter 10, verse between 23 and 25, you look it up. It's verse uh, chapter 10. It says, do not forget. Do not forget the assembling together. That is powerful. That is a commandment. Why? Because only when we come together, only when we, you put a lot of wood, you have a nice, cozy fire. Right? Right. You... Pull yourself from that fire. You quit coming. You let life get in between your schedule. Then we will see other results. Why? Why brother so-and-so? Why sister so-and-so? Boy, 50 years in the church. Man, you can't stand to be around people like that. Before his ascension, Christ made the promise to his followers, to his disciples. Matthew 28, 20. And surely I am with you always, even unto what? The end of the age or the end of this world. And lastly, lastly, in the last book of the Bible, Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them on their God. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. We cannot get rid of God. We cannot get rid of God. He has vowed and he has promised to be with us for, uh, uh, for how long? Forever. Forever. Even in our misery, in our misery, in our state, sinful state, he came down and he tabernacled with us. He showed us what? The love of the Father. Who he really is. Now here's something, folks. Give me four minutes. One of my iconic persons or figures is Abraham Lincoln. I have read quite a bit of, about Abraham Lincoln, but I like this one. This quote. When he was asked, and I, I, allegedly it was something about uh, the Civil War. I mean, you know, when the war was going on. And he was asked whether he says that God was on our side, you know, on his side. And this is what he said. My concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God is always right. God has promised to be with us, Emmanuel. Now the challenging question, folks, now listen to me careful. Because there are some of us that we have not committed entirely to the Lord. And I will not make any apology in telling you this. And I'm preaching to myself. God is with us. The problem is, uh, am I on his side? 
am I his? I am not saying that you don't believe in God. <laughs> even, the, even the devil does that. And he goes beyond. Yeah. He trembles. Right. But he, he, is not, he will not be saved. If you and I make a conscious decision to be on God's side, to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, then this is what he has promised. What he will be for you and for me. He will be our refuge and, refuge and strength. He will be a very pleasant, present help in trouble. So, if he is with us, then we will not fear. Even if the earth is removed. Even if the mountains are carried into the midst of the sea. Even if COVID gets worse. Or what have you comes your way. Even death comes. You and I will not be swayed because what? We have made him our refuge and strength. We have connected God with us. Amen. The invitation is in verse 4, and this is Psalm 46. There's a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God and the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. And now here is God telling you and telling me, be still. Be still and know that I am God. How desperate we are in knowing God. Then God says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Long, long time ago, there was a song written in Latin. And uh, in the 12th century, John M. Neal, in 1851, translated to the English version, and we know it, O come, O come, Emmanuel, is a reminder of God's promise to send a Savior. And folks, you, you all know, you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, or you should know that God that didn't send Jesus on December 25th. We know that. But as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we join with the sentiment of the world, especially in this time of the year, to acknowledge that God did send Jesus Christ to die for you and for me. But the most exciting thing is that he is coming soon for you and for me if we have prepared ourselves. Not in our own strength, but in the strength that he gives us through the power of the Holy Spirit. That is true because he said so. And that's why we preach this message of hope. If some of you are wondering what Seventh-day Adventist meaning is, that we worship on the seventh day, Sabbath, that God has instituted. Not what man has said, what God says. And that is because we believe that Jesus is coming very, very soon. And you look at the signs and, and uh, everything that is going around the world is telling us that he is at the door, even at the door. So I challenge you and I challenge you folks here to let us make a conscious decision to change, to change our behavior, to change. Not because we have to do it, because we love him. We want to be with him. The most wonderful words will be, Oh, come, blessed of my father, come on in and inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Amen. That is what would be so sweet. But the most awful words is what I said at the beginning. To spend your whole life, my whole life, born in the church, PK, do everything that what can do probably and hear those faithful words depart from me you worker of iniquity because I never knew you oh but Lord I preach at Irmo I was in charge you know the conference tell me told me this this and the other yeah I didn't know you you knew about me about me you didn't know me remind ourselves that God made the ultimate sacrifice to send his dear son so that we can emulate, we can be Christ-like. Not like Christ, Christ-like.
Christ-like, which is very important. So take courage. Let's make conscious decisions. Those of you that have not been that's still in the valley of decision. Not being baptized. Not being committed fully into the Lord's army. We need your help. He needs your help. He needs our help to spread the good news of this message here in Arma. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being so good to us that you still give us. Give us time. In spite of what we are seeing and watching, how the world is developing, how everything is coming into line with your plan. Of course, we do not know the future, but you, you do. And that's why you are giving us this time to reflect. And help me, Lord, not to be wishy-washy about your word. Because we're all in this together. We want to be with you. We want to be with you. But we have to learn how to love you and then do things because, not we have to, because we love you. Obedience by love. In Jesus Christ, amen. amen.